Nestled under the trees on the 10 acres of the Kansas Oil Museum is the Foster Schoolhouse, organized March 14, 1885. Walking through the doorway into this historic building, I was inspired by a little known historical fact related to one room schools and its correlation to the future of museums. Hello, I'm Warren Martin, Executive Director of the Kansas Oil Museum, and this is Direct Talk. Today, I'm coming to you from inside the Foster Schoolhouse. The Foster School is the only historic building on our grounds where the door opens to the outside. It actually is a very awkward door. You have to step up onto the landing to unlock the door and then step off the landing to open the door before entering. My curious mind wondered, why would you build the doorway in this manner? This curiosity brought to mind the history of another one-room school located in Bab Switch, Oklahoma. Bab Switch no longer exists, but was located seven miles south of Hobart, Oklahoma, where General Tommy Frank's Leadership Institute Museum is located. As former director of that organization, I learned much about the local history in the area. Today, Bab Switch is home to a rest stop with picnic table and historical marker. However, the story of Bab Switch School fundamentally impacted all of our lives and the Foster Schoolhouse. On December 24, 1924, over 200 people had gathered together at the Bab Switch School for a Christmas Eve party. The room was packed. This one room schoolhouse was definitely over the limit. At the front of the room was a Christmas tree and it was lit up with candles on all of its branches. Also in the Christmas tree were presents for all of the children. There was a teenager who was dressed up as Santa Claus and was passing out the presents to the kids. In the middle of that, a flame hit one of the decorations, which went to the tree, which spread to the entire school. The school had just recently been painted with using turpentine as a thinner, and so it quickly spread throughout the entire school. In a panic, everyone began trying to exit the building. Just days before, they had enclosed all of the windows with a metal screen to prevent vandals from being able to get into the school. This also prevented people from being able to get out of the windows. People rushed to the building's only door, which opened inward. It was soon jammed with people desperate to escape. The windows were blocked by secure metal screens meant to prevent vandals from breaking into the school. 36 people died in the fire. The dead and injured were transported by car to Hobart, Oklahoma. The Bab Switch fire became national news. It launched a campaign to improve school safety in response to the fire. The state of Oklahoma passed the Fox Bill, which improved fire safety requirements for schools. The law required all schools to have a minimum of two doors opening outward. School safety across the nation became a major concern, including in Kansas. In the earliest photos of the Foster Schoolhouse before 1924, it is clear that the doorway opens inward. This is not surprising as almost all buildings were built in this way. However, in pictures dated to 1926, we see that the entire doorway, including the window above the door, has been turned around to open outward. This created an awkward entrance to the schoolhouse, but a much safer exit. I did a non-scientific study where I went around and I asked people, what is a door for? Almost everybody said a door is to get into a building. Some people actually said that a doorway is there to keep people from getting into a building. But not a single person said that the door was there to get out of a building. We have a tendency to focus on getting people in rather than getting people out. This proved to be tragic at the Bad Switch fire. It can also prove to be a social tragedy for museums if we do not change. I believe that museums are at a crossroads. We have an opportunity here to become an essential part of our educational system. But we've got to figure out how to turn the door around and get the museum out into the community, become an effective part of the community, working together and partnering together with businesses, with schools, with organizations to become an essential educational facility that impacts the lives of the students and adults in our areas. The vision of the Kansas Oil Museum is to develop our collections, facilities, and programming to be a vital educational asset in our region. 
This is not going to happen if it is dependent upon getting everyone to enter through the front door. It is dependent on development and adaptation of educational programs that meet people where they are and make an investment in their lives. An educational investment built on the foundation of history. Museums are at a vital crossroads. To remain relevant and engaged in the story of our communities, museums are going to have to adapt. If our doors only open inward, the consequences for the future will be dire. The Kansas Old Museum is dedicated to turning the door around and engaging our communities. We are currently working with community partners, schools and businesses to adapt our educational program to meet the needs of the community. We invite you to join us in this effort. It is vital for the future of our nation that we invest in educational programming that is built on the solid foundation of history. You can be a part of that vision. You can come and become a member of the Kansas Oil Museum. You can like us on Facebook. You can come volunteer or leave a donation. But I invite you to join us and become a part of this crucial moment in our history where we invest in educational programming built on the foundation of history. For the Kansas Oil Museum, I'm Warren Martin, and we'll see you again next time for Direct Talk.